in Kankaka is this United States national team is over hype. When you look at things, last World Cup qualify, they make it to the World Cup, but they are a very weak team away from home. The United States, they're full of talent. We're not taking anything away from the United States. They're full of talent. They have some of the best talent in CONCACAF playing in a, some top five league in Europe. Syria, England, Spain, Germany. So the U.S. have a bunch of young talent in the Premier League and Spain and some top five league. But don't get me wrong. Is this United States team over hype? We are going to get into the discussion. And not only that, we have someone from the United States going to give them opinion what they think of my statement because strongly believe that USA hosts most of these big tournaments where the US with this young team would look outside of CONCACAF. We see them playing the World Cup qualifying, they only win what, one game away from home. We see them play against Trinidad and Tobago recently and they lost away against Trinidad and Tobago. United States fans, let me know. I know you guys, you know, like to overhype you guys team, but let's see. Welcome to the show. The man himself who going to break down this and let, let us know if they overhype. Good evening. How are you doing, Coach Dacasta? Hey, good evening, Ryan, and good evening to everybody out there in, uh, in Ryan LFC Universe, Elite Sports TV and everything. Bless up. Blessings. So no way. What's going on, Ryan? I'm doing good, man. So, Coach Dacasta, you live in the Atlanta, and you, you you know about the United States. Is this United States overhyped? Talk to me. Well, U.S. US national team has been in a slump lately. They recently lost Slovenia, one nothing. But, of course, there were 11 new um, players made their debut um, cap for the U.S. national team. So it was a, new, a newer, inexperienced team. It wasn't, you know, the politics and the... The bigger, the bigger gun them. But even with Pulis against and uh, and their, their top players, they still had bad results against Trinidad and Tobago. In a sense, of U.S. national team has not been on form lately. So a lot of people, in, including myself, think that Jamaica has a great opportunity to beat them in this Nations League com um, competition coming up here. You know, um, they have a controversial coach in Greg Berhalter who was removed as national team coach for a while because of an incident with one of the players. And then, um, he, then he was reinstated after a long search for a new national team coach. They came back and rehired Greg Berlholter, which, is, which was a very strange thing that happened. But, you know, the, 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 the people search me said he couldn't find anybody better, so they went back to Greg Berlholter. So my question to you, Coach Dacas, I want you to be honest. With the talent of this United States team, if you listen to the United States fans, most of them said Beralta is not the man to take them forward. But when you look at it, stats-wise, he's right up there with some of the best United States coach. Right? The Nation League, they win the Nation League, they win the Gold Cup. Why they don't see Beralta as that coach to take them forward, in your opinion? Well, okay, Greg Bo, uh, there's not, America suffered from uh, what Jamaica has suffered from, which is not having their own style of play for, for, for a long time, for decades, you understand? They try to be uh, um, the Germans out under Jürgen Klinsmann as their uh, head coach, and that didn't work. Before that, they tried all different foreign coaches and things, and then a few American coaches. And, and you know, what happened was that Greg Borhalter used to coach the Columbus crew in the MLS. And the Columbus crew had a reputation of being this tough, hard-nosed team that will just battle you and grind you out. And it was the closest thing to an American style that we saw. So they say, the, the thinking was, can we bring Greg Borhalter to the, make him the national coach and he bring that Columbus crew that won MLS Cups and, and that tough style, which is, which is very difficult to play against, you know. Um, and so far, he hasn't he's not been able to do that because, you know, it, because one of the reasons I think is the players are just way too young. 
everybody is a 20 year old or a 21 year old. All the talent is so young for the US, you understand? There's no old grizzled veterans that you know, um, you can depend on that been through the wars and things. The US don't have that kind of history. So all these players are just young and they, so they have to rely on their coach. And some of them being modern young players, they don't want to listen to the coach. It's, you know, the game is easy, we make it hard. Coaches, players, and fans, we make the game hard. And a, a lot of times, you know, if you just listen to the coach, because I, I always say this, the coach's plan is the only plan that includes everyone. Some players could have them bridging on the team and say, yeah, you just pass them. we're going to come up with a plan. But it's only them, two or three players, know about it, what's going on. The rest of the team, they don't know, not in on it. So, you know, I, I tell these guys, man, buy into the coach's program, and you have to buy into it. Just like Jamaica has to buy into Henry Halderson's program, they have to buy into it and play his system. If they don't, if they decide that, you know, whomever it is, decide they're going to play the morning thing and do the morning thing, or they'll be selfish, we're not going to be successful, you know, or for long term. So, yeah. once again, Greg Bohalt is having his rough, trying to regain control of his national team. And uh, we, we're going to see, uh, you know, this last game against Slovenia, like I said, 11 players made their debut for the U.S. national team. Um, so it wasn't none of the big guns for the U.S., you know, um, you know Timothy Weah, uh, Giovanni Rania, you know, uh, Christian Pulisic, you know, Eunice Musa in the midfield, Uncle Tyler Adams was coming off an injury. And then, of course, the defender, I mean, and Anthony Robinson, you know, U.S. has um, some, yeah, I, all the players I mentioned are young, Ryan. Yeah. When, when so, I, when I, yeah very so, young. We're talking about 20-year-olds. Yeah. You know, so, was, what, 19? I mean, I mean, my goodness. Yeah. So, listen, viewers and subscribers, don't get it wrong, don't get it twisted. We're having a conversation, right? So, we all know that the United States, as I said in the intro, they have good quality and they have world class talent, right? But with the experience, not in this United States team, it can cause a problem. And we see it when they play away from home, right? They are a good team. They win Gold Cup, they win Nation League back to back. We're not take that away from them. We all know they are a good team. But Compared to who in other in other world, right? United States are not that team that going to come to Jamaica and ball Jamaica like how Mexico is do it. When Mexico in their prime, this is the difference. When Mexico in their prime, they go anywhere in Concacaf, a style, and dominate. I haven't seen that from the United States outside of the United States as yet. That's what I'm saying. And the reason why is because of youth and inexperience. You understand? Any team, give me a team full of, of top talent ballers, but if they're young and inexperienced, inexper experience is the greatest teacher. You understand? Uh, it goes back to like when coaching, and all these men them come and they got study and they come with them coaching license and this and that, and they don't have any practical experience actually coaching teams. And I remember my college coach told me if you want to become a good coach, before you coach them talent, coach a team that doesn't have any talent. So you have the X's and O's of the, the sport now make you your team successful. So you have to scheme and make sure them players are unit defensively and players are unit midfield and players are unit up top. You understand? So the, the tactics of the game will help you to be more successful because you just don't have the top players. You just get in the ball and then dribble, dribble three and four, man, and score a goal and you win. That's not coaching. You understand? That's you have the better talent. You have the most talent. So, you know, I, so... Once again, the U.S. team is so young, and then they had a controversy where the coach was removed. Remember now, he wasn't, he wasn't coaching the Gold Cup, you know? Yeah, I, 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 agree. I agree. So now for him to come back now, and, and it was a shock to some of the players that they brought him back. Everybody thought it was going to be, um, where am I there from back in uh, um, AC Milan, um, back in there? Remember Rude Hullet, uh, Marco Van Basten, and Frank Reichardt. I thought they wanted Frank Reichardt. Okay. All right. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. So let, let us put the record straight. The United States is a way better team than the Jamaican national team. And let's get it straight. Went on form. Went on form. The All right. 
have a system and they know it and they play and players trust each other and they work and play for each other, U.S. can beat anybody in the world when they're on form with the talent that they have. Yeah. And this is no comparison to the Jamaican national team. U.S. is better than us. Just let it clear and set the standard. U.S., one of the team in CONCACAF. I still think they are one of the best teams in CONCACAF. Right, but they have to improve on a lot of stuff. They're going into the 2026 World Cup, they're going to be at home. A lot of pressure will be on the United States, nothing less than a quarter final for the United States. Any other thing than that, it's a failure to a lot of the United States fans. And for me, I don't think Bralta is the most tactical coach and can get the best out of this United States team. When you look at the United States team, I don't think they have the manager with the young talent they have to take them forward. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah. So this is no comparison to Liverpool. So to, to Jamaica. So just let it clear. Yeah, go ahead. Coach Dacosta. Oh, sorry. I got so somebody sent me a text message saying them see me on your shoulder. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> why would you do that? You know, man? <laughs> We're live, you know, it's not like yeah. this thing or whatever. No, like I said, once again, Greg, Greg Bullhalter won this U.S. coaching job originally because of the style of his MLS team, the Columbus crew, and the way they played, and they were tough to break down, they're tough to beat, and they played as a unit, and they went forward, and they just attack you and break you down. You know, it was the closest thing to a U.S.-type system that um, we saw, you understand that? And you ever, you ever play one of those teams, right? I think all the way back to your high school days or whatever, right? And it's just tough to get past these defenders. Tough to is that you see like they work for each other. And you know that's the, well, that's what they, we got with the Columbus crew under Greg Berhalter, and thing. But now for him to have a controversy for those who know he had a controversy with Gio Rainier, one of the top young players, like a 19 year old, right? And he, had, he Ian Rainier got into it, and it's a personal thing. And he, he didn't put in his last World Cup. He didn't even play Rainier. Remember, Rainier bench Gio Rainier in, in his last World Cup here which really upset a lot of people in U.S. soccer because it was a personal thing from Berhalter. You can't, and as a coach, you have to put the best 11 for your country. And you can't have your little personal feelings. You have to be more professional than that. And that's not the, one of the knocks I had on Berhalter. But now that Berhalter is back now, how does that affect? Team chemistry is all over the place with U.S. national team, so we don't know what we're going to get. They're calling in all the big guns for this National League Cup, but we don't know what team we're going to get. I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think the game against United States and Jamaica next month is going to be a very difficult one for Jamaica, missing a lot of players. And if the United States beat us, I wouldn't surprise. I wouldn't surprise. So when I say, and I make a tiger, I believe that United States is over hype. I mean, let's put it in context, meaning compare to teams in Europe with the talent. If you look in all position, they have good goalkeeper, they have good centre back, they have good wing back, they have good midfield, they have good striker. All of the top players them in the United States is play in Europe. And I'm comparison to team in Europe. Don't get me wrong, they did very well against England. They very do very well in the World Cup qualify in the in the World Cup. In, in Qatar, and I must give them credit for that. But can they perform consistently? We see they play against the Germany, they get smashed. At some point in time, this United States team have to come better. And for me, one of the most things that I think affecting the United States team, yes, they're young, but they need to play away from home more to get yeah. that experience. Right. Just, imagine, so, yeah. just imagine if they would have played. If they made a play World Cup qualify for make it to 2026 World Cup away from home. They are not that team yeah. away from home. It's, it's funny you mentioned the Germany game, right? Um, US lost to Germany 3-1 this past summer in a friendly, right? Yep. But in the first half of the game, US was giving Germany all it could handle. You understand? And US went up when Christian Pulisic scored and went up, US went up one nothing on Germany. Do you remember that game, Ryan? Germany yeah. here when they were side, right? But guess what happened? To your point, the adjustments were made, the tactical adjustments were made by the Germans and none by the U.S. 
Mm. And Germany came back and beat them 3-1. You understand? Yes. So that's where the immaturity comes in. So, you have to, so both your points, U.S. have world-class talent, but it is the coaching world-class. Germany has world-class talent, but the coaching is world-class. You understand? And one of the things I always say um, to, to, to our team, let's not beat ourselves. What do we mean by beat ourselves? Before the match even start, we don't do the things that are distractions to the team. And, you know, like you getting into it with a player and things like that, that form divisions within the team. Let's not beat ourselves. Let's make sure we get to the match on time. Let's say we warm up properly. We do things, you know, we don't lead. We don't, let's not beat ourselves with a lot of stuff. It goes back to like the Jamaican Football Federation. You know, we, they're beating us before our team even hit the pitch with all this, this, this the nonsense they go on with. You understand that? I'm preparing this. The bus late pick the, pick up the team from the hotel to, to, to the training facility or the match. And we can't have any kind of logistical things. In the U.S., they're on point with all that. Tight. And, and of course... Tell me something. Yeah. Wait about this. I think one of the biggest things not making the United States make that jump to be that team stand out in the world, I think is the coach. And I think... March would be the perfect coach for the United States. Joshima would be the yeah. perfect coach. The way of him play attacking football, closing down team. We see him did it at Leeds, right? We see him did it at, at Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, he's have that experience. He's the only American manager to coach in the Champions League. And I think he is the guy to take the U.S. national team forward. I'm not talking about just compete. I don't want to see United States just compete in this region. The talent that United States have, they're supposed to compete in Europe against the better team, international team. And I think they have the talent to do it. But one thing stopping the United States is the United States don't have that key manager to take them forward. You're right. Um, listen, let me tell you something. Remember I um, told you, in order to be a successful coach, you have to be a leader of men. One of the things I found out, right? If the man is in the locker room, the, play, the ball and don't respect you and don't reach you, it's hard for you to coach them. You understand, Ryan? So we, when we hired Hammer Hargerson, one of the questions I asked for you last spring was, is he a leader of men? Let, that's yet to be determined. Let's see how he leads. Do the man and respect him? Are they out there doing whatever the hell they want to do? You understand? Um, and that's that, which your point now. When you have a leader that, uh, that they respect, like Jesse Marsh, you, yes. And, I, and Jesse Marsh has an idea of what he wants his team to do, what he wants them to look like, how they want them to play, attacking, how they want them to play defensively, you know, and overall. What, what is it? And when you like that vision for your over team, you know, like I said, I'm through my coaching career, right? I've met so many coaches who are frauds, man. Right? Remember we first talked last spring? It's going to be about a year now. And I said, most of the coaches, 80% are frauds. Yeah. Because yeah. when I play against a good, well-coached team, right, they don't give us nothing. They're tight defensively. The marking on set plays, they're, they're running and jumping. And I can tell this is a well-coached team. I want to play a you know, coach that's just talk, talk, them loose air and loose air. You can't, you can't easily break them down. And I said, so, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, is that old saying, right? And, and when, when it comes to, to uh, some of these coaches, you, you know, the, the talk, the rhetoric don't match the player of the team. They don't, the, the, the team don't, you know, the, I, my, my college coaches used to get mad at the halftime. Right? I said, this is not my team. I can't put my name on this team. That's not all my team's play. My team's don't do these things like that. We don't know. I, you know, I, 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 that was reinforced in me. You have to be the coach of your team and they have to play the way you want them to play. And you make them play or you get rid of them. Individual players. Okay. Fair enough. People, stop what you're doing and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you're new around here, if you're watching back on the replay, don't forget to hit that like button. Coach Takasta, final thing before we move on. United States versus Jamaica. Who do you think going to win? Give me a score prediction. Oh, man. Oh, see, that's tough because I don't know who Jamaica's going to have. U.S. Greg uh, Burkhalter, U.S. national team coach, as I already said, he's bringing out all the big guns. He's calling in everybody. Everybody on all oh, Omnic. So the U.S. is going to be loaded. Jamaica now without Shamari Nicholson, without Damari Gray, both should be on suspension. Although they're talking about Shamari, is something wrong or is some yeah, decision he made? He's, he's everything is good with, with him right now. 
So yeah, so I mean, it, it, so will he be allowed to play? That's what I, that's my question. No, 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 no. He will miss the game. He will miss the game. Okay, so there you go. So with those two, it's which is huge because look at your last goal scored by US other than penalty kicks. Oh, oh, them two scored. You know that, right? Right? Yeah. You know the majority of goals are gone, and you can't under uh, people don't understand that. You take that out of your team now. What are you left with? No, if you tell me you're bringing in some big guns from England or something or whatever, then I say, yes. You know, you can't tell me you're bringing young 19-year-olds or 18-year-olds and them going to put the pressure on them to lead Jamaica. That don't seem realistic to me. Although I'll take young talent over all dead legs anytime. Okay. So right now, um, if the U.S. is not on form, or as I would say U.S. 3-1 easily yes. over this Jamaican side. Because we're lacking our goal scorers, so hope, you know. Um, uh, so right now, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, two one US right now. Sorry. Just Fair enough. I'm, I'm I'm spinning it back, and I'm predicting Jamaica to beat the United States two one. I'm spinning it back, but anyway, let's move on from the United States. But anyway, no eight on the United States. Big up the United States. No, we always support CONCACAF. You know, when, when, when Jamaica not in it, we're going to support the CONCACAF team. That's what you're supposed to. Our region has to grow. Uh, you know, and CONCACAF, so it's Mexico, U.S., Panama, Costa Rica, whoever's, whoever's left, you know, representing our region because they're representing CONCACAF. Mm. Three, three, two, Jamaica. Yes, um, Jamaica to beat them. But let us see. Let us, let us see. Now, the one saving grace, if Leon Bailey is on four, Watch out, US. Watch out. If Leon Bale is on form and leading this Jamaican national team, all bets are off. If we get this Leon Bailey that's been destroying and marshalling the English Premier League, ho oh, oh. ho. You know, when I said that back in the day when they couldn't stop Michael Jordan, now, the one man in there, just take over the match, you can't do nothing. Yeah. So that's the saving grace of Jamaica. We have a chance because we have a, we have a puncher's chance because we have the great Leon Bailey on our side. Let, anyway, let us see how we cope with some of our main players missing. The United States backline is not the greatest. If we can put in a good, solid defensive shape and hit them on the counter with the likes of Mikel Antonio and Leon Bailey, something can happen. But 